Detective Sergeant. You're assigned the burglary detail. In the past two months, a thief has broken into 18 markets. There's no lead to his whereabouts. No clue to his identity. Your job? Get him. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Monday, December 14th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. We were on our way out of the office. It was 8.05 a.m. when we got to Georgia Street Juvenile Bureau. Sergeant Lindsay Simmons' office. Yeah? Well, did you give it to him? Uh-huh. Yeah. What'd he say? Yeah. <laughs> when he come back? Uh-huh. Well, did he have it for you? Yeah. <laughs> well, that'll teach you not to go that route anymore. All right, Patrick. Tell the sergeant to call me when he gets back. Right. Oh, hi, Friday Smith. Oh, hi, Lindsay. Morning, Sergeant. Just talking to Gene Patrick over at Highland Park. You know him? Yeah, I met him a couple of times. Picked up a youngster a couple of days ago on suspicion of burglary. Brought him into the office, and Patrick talked to him. Yeah. Well, he finally bought it that the kid didn't have anything to do with the theft. He told him to go home. Uh-huh. Kid told Gene he didn't have the money to get home, so Gene gave him 20 cents. Kid swore he'd come in and pay it back. Did he? Yeah, he came in this morning, gave Patrick two dimes. Told him thanks for believing the story. Mm-hmm. Then Patrick got the kicker. Kid really did break into a house last night to get the money. Well, what's Patrick got to say about that? <laughs> Says the kid's honest in a sort of way. He did pay him back. Well, where's the youngster now? Got him over Highland Park Juvenile. I better call Gene. Maybe I can give him a hand. I got a couple of streetcar tokens I won't be using. Might like to have him. Oh, hold it. If I was you, I don't think I'd bring it up to him for a couple of days. Well, what can I do for you two? Well, Lindsay, we've been working on a string of burglaries. You maybe got the word on them. Well, I don't think so. What's the story? A bunch of store burglaries. Papers are tagged in the milk bottle job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it seems Hartgrove was telling me something about him the other day. Uh, where do we come in? Well, the way the jobs look, we've been thinking that maybe belong in your department instead of ours. How you figure that? First off, the milk thing. What do you mean? Every job he's pulled, we found an empty milk bottle on the counter. Okay, what's that prove? Well, milk and kids go together. Sure, so do milk and ulcers. Maybe a thief's got the bull hard when he gets into the store. No, Lindsay, there's another thing. The way he prowls the places, all he takes is petty cash. Just a couple of bucks outside. Candy, cigarettes, nothing big. Some of the places he's gone into, you could open the safe with a pocket knife. And he hasn't even made a move toward him. Maybe he's a kleptomaniac. Got a lot of them on the books. Maybe that's the way he gets his kick. Oh, that's a nice try, Lindsay. If you know anybody that can climb through a 14 by 10 inch hole, you trot him up and we'll talk to him. Okay, I haven't got the names on my desk, but you take a trip to Santa Anita, you'll meet a lot of them. Jockeys. You guys know we'll go along with you on this thing. Anything we can do, but until we're sure that there's a juvenile involved, there's nothing we can do. Anything turns up, we'll be sure to turn it over to you. Now, look, we're not trying to palm this thing off on you, Lindsay. We've had the stats office make so many runs on small adults that the cards are wearing out. It just seems that none of the leads we've been chasing come out anywhere. We figured that maybe you could come up with some answers for us. Well, it's a new one on me, Joe, this milk bet. I've heard of a couple of thieves that went for it, but I can't name you a juvenile offhand. I'll pass the word around today. Watch, see what they can come up with. I'll leave a note for Hartgrove. He can pass it on the night watch. Well, I appreciate anything you can do. No trouble. Been running you ragged on this, huh? Pretty rough. Just that we can't seem to be able to come up with anything that adds. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Georgia Street Juvenile, Sergeant Simmons. Yeah. Yeah, they're here. Which one? Oh, okay. Hang on. Yeah. For you, Joe, your office. Thank you. Friday talking. Yeah. Right away. What's the address? Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, I got it. We'll leave right away. Who? Yeah, call him. Thanks. Well, come on, let's go. The milk bottle kitty hit again. The call had come from Lieutenant Ginder in burglary. He told us that he'd just gotten a call from a storekeeper named Marty Derabertus. The man had called to report a burglary at his store at the corner of Jackson and Broadway Street. Lieutenant Ginder told us that the crime lab had been notified and had dispatched a crew to investigate the premises for physical evidence. Frank and I left Georgia Street Juvenile, and we drove over to Figueroa, and then we turned over onto Broadway. The store that had been broken into was a small Italian delicatessen on the southeast corner. By the time we got there, the crime lab crew had already arrived and was winding up their investigation. We walked into the place, and we met with Ray Pinker. Hi, Joe. Frank. Ray. Hi, Ray. How's it going? The usual thing. Bottle of milk on the counter. You want to check it over? Yeah. 
Come on back here. Chief made his entrance back here, the rear of the store. There it is. Broke out the window pane. Yeah, not very big, huh? It measures nine and a half by twelve and three quarters. Huh. No alarm on the window, huh? Yeah, you can see the wires here. Take a look. Oh, yeah. How come the alarm didn't go off? I talked to the owner. He said he's had trouble with the alarm system the last couple of weeks. Called the company and asked them to fix it. Mm-hmm. He thought it was okay. Because there's something wrong someplace. It didn't work last night. What kind of alarm was it, Ray? Outside on the building. You know the kind. Yeah. What did he take this time, Ray? Usual run of stuff. According to the owner, there are about four cartons of cigarettes missing, several boxes of candy. He can't be absolutely sure. So he's got to check his stock. Be better if you talk to him on that. Yeah, we will. We'll catch him later. Want to wait a minute? I'll check and see how the boys are doing on the prints. Have them check the counter in the milk bottle. Fine, thanks, Ray. Be right back. Bye. I don't wonder when we're going to blow the whistle on this guy. I don't know. Can't do it fast enough for me. I'm with you. Hey, Joe. Hmm? Look at this. Yeah, I'd like to get a couple of those before we leave. What are you talking about? Salami, Joe. Those right there, the hard Italian kind. Mm-hmm. See, right there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember last summer I was out in San Francisco. Yeah, I remember. Went up there to pick up a prisoner. Remember you were collecting days off? Yeah, I recall. I had a hundred of them coming. Yeah, <laughs> pretty funny. Anyway, I met Dan Shelley up there. You mean the Irish tenor? Yeah, he and I went down to Cookie's Bar for lunch. Cookie had some of this salami. Sliced it like paper. You could almost read through it. Oh, that's the way it's supposed to be. I know, Joe. Anyway, Cookie sliced up a bunch of it, served it with cold cracked crab. Boy, I never tasted anything so good in my life. Hey, don't you ever read the newspaper through sliced salami? Yeah? Well, I never have. Have you? All the time. Just the funnies. Well, anyway, Faye tried to find them for me. Salami like this. Brought home all kind of things, but she's never found the right kind. You know, they'd be hard enough to pound tax with when she got them home. Oh, I never forget old Cookie and that spread. <laughs> well, if you can get your mind off food for a minute, and I know that'll be tough, let's get on with this thing, shall we? Yeah. Sure got to buy some of these before we leave. <laughs> Just like Cookie had. Yeah. Just finish with powder, Joe. Yeah. Nothing. Whoever it was drank the milk, he took the bottle out of the refrigeration compartment. The bottle sweated, and there isn't a print on it we can lift. Yeah, too bad. None of them many places, huh? Yeah, we've gone over the place from top to bottom. So there we can't find them. It's not much help, is it? Came up with one thing. Maybe you can make something out of it. What's that? Outside the window in the back parking lot. Came up with an open package of cigarettes. Don't know if it belonged to the thief. Anything on it? No. Fog last night ruined any prints that were on it. Boys have got it if you want it. Yeah. Well, we'll take a look at it. Looks like everything's against us, huh? Another blank. Don't envy you guys trying to break this one. Most of the time there's a leak someplace. Somewhere along the line, the guy's going to make a mistake and not cover something. Yeah, we've been saying that for weeks. This is either the smartest thief I've ever seen or the luckiest. What's this make for him? Number 19. A lot of chances to take for nothing. He's not getting anything out of the job. Maybe he isn't, but we are. What? Headaches. Ah! 9.38 a.m. We talked to the victim. He told us that as near as he could figure, there was approximately $4 stolen from the store. He went on to say that he'd ascertained that five cartons of cigarettes and several boxes of candy bars were taken. He was unable to tell us if any other merchandise was taken until he'd made a complete inventory. He went on to tell us that there was over $600 in the safe, but that as far as he could tell, there'd been no attempt to break into it. We made a canvas of the neighborhood and talked to the neighbors. None of them recalled having seen any suspicious people in the neighborhood the night before. None of them had seen any suspicious automobiles in the area. The one thing that was apparent was that the thief was working in a definite pattern. He worked only on Friday and Saturday nights, always between 8 p.m. and 12 midnight. Frank and I met with Captain Bernard, and it was decided that we would maintain a rolling stakeout in the area in which the suspect operated. Four other cars from Metro Reserve were assigned to work with us. For the next five nights, we worked without result. It was slow and tedious, but considering the lack of information on the thief, it was the only way we had left. We had to be on or near the scene when the thief struck again. Saturday night, December 19th, Frank and I met and drove out to the area. The streets were crowded with early Christmas shoppers. I'll sure be glad when it's over. Why? What's the matter? How many rooms in your apartment, Joe? Three. You know that. You've been there. Yeah. Well, that won't be enough room. What are you talking about? Faye. What's Faye got to do with this? Hack, Joe. Real hack. Why? What's the matter? I got up this morning. I felt great. Faye's got breakfast on the table. All nice. A couple eggs. Little pig sausages. Nice, you know. Yeah. I come down to the table. She's got the food on. And I hit her with it. What, the food? No, Joe, I hit her with what I'm about to tell her. I tell her I'm going to have to work tonight. Mm-hmm. You work every night this week. What's wrong with that? Well, that's the way I figure it, so I got a way out. You have, huh? Today is Faye's birthday. Well, you didn't tell me. It's not good to tell people, Joe. Oh, it isn't? No. Faye's over 30. Yeah. 
I kind of figured that. Don't you get it? <laughs> I'm sorry, pal. You left me a couple of blocks back on this one. Look, Faye. I may never catch up. Faye's over 30, Joe. She's getting to the point where she's taken off years, see? How can you give a person a, a last birthday present? Yeah. I tell you about it, they're going to give her a present. Only now instead of 30, she's 29. You understand? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, no. But as long as you do, it's perfectly all right with me. Yeah. What about this morning? Well, I told her I was going to have to go to work. I got this present for her. Brand new deep fat fryer. Real good. What? All wrapped up. Deep fat fryer. All wrapped up with ribbon. Beautiful. Shiny. Beautiful. So you gave it to her. Did it do any good? Not a pound. You know what she does with it? Well, at this point, I wouldn't even want to guess. I'm serious, Joe. This may mean the end of my home. Go ahead. She doesn't even open it. Just puts it in the closet on the back porch. Doesn't even pull the paper apart to peek at what's in it. Real mad, Joe. You may not let me back in the house tonight. Well, you can apologize when you get home. I don't know, Joe. Face pretty sore. Didn't even open the present. Not Wait a even minute. a peek, huh? Listen. Yeah, tell where it's coming from? Yeah, it sounds like up on 7th. Come on. Yeah, right here. Pull up. Come on. I'm going to take the front. All right. He asked you a question, son. Pretty stupid. What do you think I was doing? How many stories you broken into, son? Figure it out for yourself. Look, what do you got a chip on your shoulder You're for? You're big guy. Don't give me a lot of conversation. Do what you want to do. All right, boy, you call it. Come on. Uh, 11.50 p.m. We called the office and told them that we had a subject in custody and that we were taking him to George Street Juvenile Bureau. We put the boy in our car and we waited until a radio car arrived. We asked the officers to notify the owner of the store and stand by until he got there. We also asked if they make a 459 report. 11.55 p.m. We started to take the youngster to the juvenile bureau. What's your name, son? What difference does it make? Acting like that isn't going to help you. You guys pick me up, remember? You worry about it. I got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, yes, you have, boy. You could have been shot back there. Maybe you should have pulled the trigger. Look, son, what's the matter with you? Why are you acting like this? You just got real lucky back there. That's the only reason you're alive now. It was dark in there. As far as I could tell, you were an adult. You didn't stop when I told you to. Now, according to the book, I could have shot you. You know that, don't you? Show him the kid. that will make you a big man. No, I'm just bringing it up to prove a point. Say Now, look, son. I'm going to tell you something. When you break into a place at night, you're not a kid anymore. You're asking for trouble. You've got both your pockets full of it. The way you work tonight makes us think you're mixed up in a lot more thefts than just tonight. That right? You ever been arrested before? No. Never been in trouble with the law, huh? Sure. I'm a real criminal. I got a ticket once for riding my bike through a boulevard stop. Radio car stopped me and tagged me. Big deal. But they're going to send me to San Quentin. Maybe even give me the gas change. How old are you? What difference does that make? How old are you? You figure. All right, you look like you're about 11 to me. That's what everybody thinks. Be 15 my next birthday. Don't get it, son. It's the truth. 15, that's what I'll be. 15. When were you born? 1939, November 2nd. You're small for your age, aren't you? Why do you say that? Aren't you? It's got nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. I can do anything any other kid can do. Anything. Don't you forget that. What's the matter with you? Is that a sore point with you? Huh? Your size. Is that a sore point? Nothing wrong with my size. Doctor says that I'm all right. Just that some people aren't meant to be as big as others. That's all. There's nothing wrong with me. No, no. Come on, son. What's your name? Now, look. You know we're going to find out. How are you going to find out? We will. Now, why don't you save us all a lot of time and tell us the truth here? It'd be better if you did. If I do tell you, you going to put it in the papers? What? I tell you, there's going to be a lot of reporters around. My name's going to get in the papers? Not from us. Can't tell you then. You mean if there's no reporters around you, I'm going to tell us your name? Is that it? That's the way it is. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Maybe that's the way it looks to you. Where do you live? Can't tell you that either. But you've got things all wrong, son. It isn't what you want to tell us. That's got nothing to do with it. You're going to tell us what we want to know sooner or later. Where are we going? Georgia Street. That's where the jail is. Why do you ask that? Because I want to know. Yeah, there's a jail there. Reporters? What? They're going to be reporters there. What is this thing with reporters in you? What's this all about? 
Reporters put your name in the papers, don't they? Sometimes. Well, you get the reporters all lined up. You get them from all the papers. You have them there, and I'll tell you all about it. The whole story. You just get the reporters and the photographers. Be sure about them, because I want some pictures, too. Well, look, let me get this straight. What? You say you aren't going to give us any information without the press being there. Is that right? That's the way it's going to be. Well, you got it wrong, boy. What? Doesn't make any difference who's there. You're going to come around. Yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> About 10 a.m., we got to Georgia Street Juvenile Bureau. Frank pulled the car into the side alley, and we took the subject out of the back seat. Up this way, son. It's a seedy-looking place. Yeah, well, it's been here a long time. Looks like a set out of a picture. And don't you worry about it, huh? You want to take him down the hall, Frank? I'll check with Hargrove. Yeah. Come on, boy. Hi, Friday. You're working kind of late, aren't you? Yeah, we are. I got to know from Simmons on the milk burglary. Checked around the night while nothing on it, so I didn't call you. I don't think you have to worry about it. I think we got the answer. Yeah? We just picked up a kid. We got him dead to rights in the market. Open bottle of milk right next to the cash register. Where is he now? Frank's got him down the hall. You think he's your boy? Yeah, it looks like it. Everything adds up. The entrance, what he tried to take, the milk. All along, it seems to fit. You got that kind of a case. What are you worrying about? There's two things. Yeah? Who he is and why he did it. He won't tell you? No. He's got some big thing working about the press. Says he won't give us anything without reporters being there. Makes it rough, Joe. You know the policy. Yeah, I do. He won't let us help him. If he wants publicity, take me down. Introduce me as a reporter. No, it might do it. Won't do any harm to try. Let's go. Go ahead. Thanks. Who am I going to be? Well, tell him you Sid Hughes from the mirror, huh? Yeah, might as well be one of the good ones. Son, you wanted to talk to somebody from the papers. It's against the policy, but we swung it for you. This is Sid Hughes from the mirror. Hi. You told the hell that guy on the phone in Baltimore? Yeah. Great. I read all about it. You gonna write me up like that? I hope not, son. There were two men killed in that operation. I read all the stories. Everybody did. That's how I mean for you to write me up. With a picture. What makes you think you got it coming? You break into one store and try to steal a couple of cartons of cigarettes, that doesn't make the first page. One store? I got into 19 of them. 19 before they caught me. That's important, isn't it? That's a story. I don't know. It might be. A couple of things we better get straightened out here. First off, what's your name? Better get your notebook out. Be able to take all this down. Don't worry about it, son. You just answer the questions. I'll get it. Yeah. Okay. My name's Elroy Graham. That's E L R O Y G R A H A M. Yeah. How old are you? I told you once. Almost 15. You said you'd broken into 19 stores. Is that right? Yeah. 19. Might have made a more, but something went wrong tonight. Had trouble with the burglar alarm. Thought I'd turned it off. Bad mistake. He's still working, it wasn't for that. Guess it only takes one, though, huh, Mr. Hughes? Yeah, I guess so. You want to tell us why you did it? What? You had to have a reason for committing these robberies. You want to tell us what it was? Sure. Good reason. Real good. All right, tell us. Well, you see, I always had trouble at school. Never seemed to quite make it. All the guys liked me. We all did. All the girls do, too. Got girls calling me almost every night asking me to take them to dance and stuff like that. I don't go much for stuff like that. You can understand, can't you, Mr. Hughes? Go ahead, all right. Well, they wanted me for all the teams, football, basketball, all the time asking me to play. But I figure if you want to get ahead in the world, you got to have a name, some place where you want to get. Figure out that. Work for it, and you're going to get there. Don't you find that true, Mr. Hughes? Go ahead. That's the way it was with me. All the time, turned down office to be on some team, telling some girl I couldn't take her to a dance. Just didn't have the time. Somehow, I just couldn't make it. You can understand it. You've been around, you know all the successful kind of people. You write something and a lot of people read it. You know what I mean. Don't you? Well, what's the matter? Something wrong? I'm trying to tell you what happened. I'm giving it to you straight. What's the matter? Now you want to tell us the truth, Elroy. What? I don't know why you're trying to sell us this line, boy. It isn't necessary. I don't know why you did what you did, but I do know you had a reason for it. Now, that's all we want to know, just a reason. You don't believe me? Afraid not. How about you? No, son, I don't. Mr. Hughes? No. Can't even lie right. <laughs> Can't even tell a lie good. All my life I've been trying to be like other kids. All the time getting beat up, getting left out of things. You know why? <laughs> Do you know? Go ahead, son. <laughs> Big reason. Biggest reason in the world. 
cousin when I was 15 years old. I'm four feet seven inches tall. Four feet seven. Weight 97 pounds. That ain't very big, not big enough. All the time, other kids shoving you around. All the time, you're the joke. Gets to the time when you figure it's easy to laugh, too. Because if you don't, some kid's going to beat you up. Gets to the point where you don't care anymore. I used to clip out those coupons and send them in. Get the books back on how to build myself up. Worked at it. Didn't do nothing for me. I was still four feet seven and weighed 97 pounds. All the stuff I took didn't do no good. Still came out four feet seven, 97 pounds. All right, so you want to tell us about the burglary? I did it to be big, that's why. I had the things other people wanted, cigarettes, candy, the other things kids wanted. I had all that stuff that the other kids wanted. <laughs> Made me important. Don't you see that? you got to understand it, Mr. Hughes. That's why I wanted my picture in the paper. That's why I wanted the story. So the kids would know that I'd done something big. So they know. <laughs> all right, son. It's going to be all right here. No, it is. Like everything else I tried to do, I loused it up. I didn't mean to steal, but it, it was the only thing to do. The only way I had. I wasn't to some other. No. No, there wasn't. All the time, the other kids laughing. All the time, talking. I just couldn't stand it anymore. I just couldn't. There you go. Thanks. You can understand it, can't you? It makes sense. What's that, son? Wasn't so much the kids saying I was little. Yeah. I didn't want them to think I was small. Twelve thirty-six a.m. We contacted the parents of the Graham boy and asked them to come down to the station. We talked to them for an hour and tried to fill them in. In view of the fact that the parents of the subject were responsible persons, the boy was booked for violation of Section Four Fifty Nine PC delinquent, and he was released to his parents pending his hearing in juvenile court. Five days passed and we heard nothing from the boy. On December 24th, Frank and I checked into the office. Friday? Yeah, Earl. Kid in the back wants to see you and Smith. Okay, thank you. Hi, Mr. Friday. Oh, well, Roy, what can we do for you? Well, I guess you think it's kind of funny. What's that? I want to tell you that I sure think it's good what you did for me. Help me with that burglary thing the other night. Well, it isn't over yet, son. The court still has to make a decision on it. Yeah. But what you did to make me feel better. As far as I'm concerned, whatever the judge decides, I'll go along with it. I had a long talk with my folks. So we got it all talked out. All the way talked out. Well, that's good, son. We're glad of it, son. Maybe you guys won't like it. I mean, me knowing you such a short time and all. But, but I wanted to bring you these. Merry Christmas. Well, that's awful nice of you, all right, but it's necessary. I want to give them to you anyway. For what you did for me. Oh, that's mighty nice of you, all right. Sure appreciate it. A couple of packs of cigarettes. Hope they're the kind you smoke. Yes, yeah, son, they'll be fine. Thanks, son. Well, you guys around, huh? Yeah, sure, son. Just one more thing, Sergeant. Yeah, son? Just thought you'd like to know. Yeah, what's that? I didn't steal those. <laughs> you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On the 21st of December, a petition was filed in juvenile court on behalf of the subject. On January 26th, trial was held in Department 52 of Juvenile Court, State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. <laughs> Martin Graham appeared before the juvenile court where he admitted the alleged burglaries. At this time, under the counsel of the judge of the juvenile court, the subject was placed under the care of the probation department for a period of three years, with the provision that his parents take him to a competent psychiatrist.
have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Jack Crucian, Olin Soule, Sammy Ogg. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Transcribed from Los Angeles, Dragnet is an NBC Radio Network production.